In part one of this build, I set out to build a computer bench for my new office. I planned out the dimensions of the desk using masking tape and then set to work cutting up the boards. Midway through, I decided that I didn't care for the stain color and didn't want to have to apply polyurethane to seal it. So I went to the store and bought some floor tiles to use as a desktop finishing material. Now I've just moved the whole piece into my office, which almost didn't fit through the door. Well, my initial tape sketch up was pretty close. Over here it got a little off. <laughs> oh well, I think my cuts are more accurate than my taping. So with these big, long L brackets, I can support a lot more of the table, giving my legs room to get under here and not hit poles. I'm just helping to secure it more with more brackets. Some of them I'm using these short brackets, uh, but this one, since it's holding such a wide area, I'm using a longer bracket. So this is the back corner. And the reason I didn't put one back here is because I'm going to drill a hole for a cable grommet. All right, so we have it done. <laughs> Not a big fan of the color of those legs. They just look dirty, but they are what they are. Maybe I can decorate them better in the future, but that's it. And so if we come down under here, you can see the brackets reaching out there to support various parts of this so I can have lots of room to spin here. I put these long brackets, like I said, reaching out so that way I have a big gap without uh, any brackets and then I really wanted to have another spot right here without brackets so I have kind of a weird placed one right there so I'm going to do this pattern here so it'll be angled in the corner and then straight out there and then out that way So after attempting to cut straight pieces just freehand for the edges here, um, this one's actually pretty good, but the other ones are not. <laughs> uh, I decided to switch to a different method that I'll show you in a second. But uh, th this back sticky part, the self-adhesive, does not work on edges. So I've gone out and got this power grab all purpose, and it seems to work pretty well. So here's the process I have for making the edge pieces. This is one inch across and my board is three quarters of an inch. So it gives me a quarter of an inch overhang, but that's all right. Nice straight edge, line up my edge. Give it a light score. A harder score. Spin it around to this edge right here that you can't see. Line that up. And it breaks right along there. So there's a nice clean piece. And then to prepare the surface, this one's overhanging, so I've decided to make this my flat edge. So I have to sand this down to the height of the board.
So now this is smooth like the board and I can put my piece right up on there. Have it overhang like that one. So if we take this stuff here, and I've just been kind of goobing it on the top half. Get it off my finger before it sticks. It's water soluble until it dries. Sets pretty fast. Within 30 seconds, it's got a decent grab to it. And so, I'm actually, I sanded off this top part and brought this up. And then I came here with a file and rounded it down and finished it off with some 220 grit sandpaper. That's actually a nice smooth lip. The only thing that's not smooth is this laminate on the top. Um, that's one thing to be, consider is, as I've said before, this tile had a laminate and that's causing issues, but it actually sanded pretty good and it didn't peel the laminate off. Time will tell if it's going to keep peeling or not. But uh, that's pretty good compared to that. And so then what I do is I bring a vacuum in like the dust and just start sanding away at it here. It's easier to do with two hands but one's holding a camera. But uh, kind of curl it around like that. Vacuum the dust up and then I do it longer than this, but just to give you an idea, then you come here and sand it with the 120 grit, and that makes a pretty smooth surface. As I was using my desk, I realized that the glue that I chose did not harden up the way I thought it would. It remained tacky for a lot longer than expected. And so from resting my arm on the edge and I like to put my feet on my desk sometimes, uh, the side pieces began to slide off and move. And so what I ended up doing was as they came loose, I'd pull them off and using a razor blade, I'd cut off the old glue the best I could. And then I decided to try using just super glue, and that seems to work a lot better. The pieces, after applying the super glue, are locked on tight, and I think I'd have to actually break the tile off in order to remove it. But you can see that the edge is very nice. Um, this doesn't bother me at all. That little bit of filing I did really rounded it out. The only couple areas I have issues with is where the laminate has peeled off just a little bit because of my poor filing, um, but I have a feeling as I rub this down and the the uh, just a little bit of hair lip sticking up gets rubbed off, um, I won't be able to feel it anymore. Okay, I'm going to have to excuse the exposure. Uh, the lighting is pretty bad right now, but uh, here it is, all done in its glory.
So I'm not the best at cable managing and I can always work on that in the future. But uh, underneath I mounted power strip and my network switch right there. Uh, over here is my server which is kind of loud and uh, if I ever get in wall ethernet networking done like I want to, I can move this to the basement and just remote into it and it'd make it a lot quieter in here because some of those fans are kind of old. All right, and here's what it uh, could kind of look like when I'm filming. Uh, I have the camera at a little angle here so you can see the desk better, but I have plenty of room to rotate it over. My table here is movable so I don't have to keep it here all the time. So the plan for filming here turned out really good. Uh, there are a couple things that I would change about this setup. Uh, one is I would make this wider. Um, I've measured it two feet based on this, uh, but by the time I cut things into it and stuff, I lost a lot of room. Uh, so if I were to do this again, I'd add another half a foot on to make the desk wider, especially in these sections right here. I find that I don't have a whole lot of room for my mouse. I like to have my hand out kind of here and mouse around here with my whole arm resting on the table and here because I made such sharp angles um, expecting my chair arms to get in the way uh, I don't have a whole lot of room to rest my arm on something else I didn't really quite take into account is having to push this against the wall well now I can't um, angle my my side monitors quite the way I like them I like them a little more flat but there's just no room being a corner desk like this so if i had arms maybe i could but if i pull this out to kind of give myself more room then i lose all my room right here as well so um, again just the extra half a foot probably will have solved all my issues a couple of other things um is this microphone arm that i reviewed uh it it doesn't quite have the length i want to be able to put it back here and if I put it here or over here, it gets in the way of things. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to take a little bit more of the scrap wood I have and build a shelf behind here. Sorry about the squeaky chair. Build the shelf behind here. And so that way I can clip things right on here and have it hang over. So I can do a light or a microphone or whatever, or my VR lighthouses for my Oculus Rift have those up there. So I'm gonna build that. I didn't do it right now because I'm tired of building. <laughs> I want to get my computer set up and then I, when I have a little more time, I will come in and build that. A couple other things that I would change uh, or that I'm going to change is this shelf. Um, this made more sense at the other house when it was on a table um, and not my main area. But here it's just too low for what I want. So what I'm going to do is build a shelf about yay up here, nice and high, because basically all these laptops are doing are going to sit up there and be open. Um, I don't actually intend to work off of them because I pick them up and take them with me. And then if I put strong mounting brackets in the back and do the same thing where I have an L bracket holding them out, then I have all that main desk area to work with once I get that up high. So I'm gonna be doing that along with the shelf in the corner back there just put something right back there coming up same type of thing and over here I might even do the same thing because I haven't quite figured out when when to do with my audio equipment I'm still waiting on a few parts um, this is what I used to have but I haven't used it in quite a while because it uses firewire and my computers haven't had firewire so I ordered a firewire card because um, that's one of the things I really wanted to do is be able to use my audio editing equipment again. Some other things I would do is I would fix the legs a bit more. Uh, I came in this without really planning where they would be and I ended up using less legs than I had originally planned, which is good, but they're kind of haphazardly scattered. And you can see here, my computer barely fits in there with enough room for me to slide in. There's enough room, but just barely because I have a huge tower. And then something else I didn't plan on was the fact that I did actually use some of the drawers in my old desk. 
And so I don't have any place for uh, little knickknacks or pens or anything like that. So I have this I added, but right now it's full of what it used to be responsible for, all kinds of miscellaneous parts. So I want to empty this into something else so that I can use it for general desk stuff. So the nice thing about this setup here, uh, like I said, once I get these up high on the shelf, I'll have room to actually do other things down here. But then I can come over here and with a three-way HDMI splitter, um, so right now I'm controlling the laptop. Uh, if I push one and switch the USB switcher, now I'm running my server down there. And then um, I do need to switch this to a three-way splitter. Right now it's just on two. But if I change the HDMI, slide these back. Now I'm controlling my Mac, or my Mac laptop over there. So I have access to be able to control those and run more video encodes on those type of things or uh, I work at an Apple company so I have access to that as well. And so having this nice long angle right here gives me actually a really good uh, direction to work on these computers and then spin back over here to my main computer all without um, too much interference. This leg doesn't really get me that much. So it turned out to be a nice setup for that. One final comment on the texture. Despite having the laser mouse, uh, it is a little touchy. Um, just that little bit of texture is enough to kind of make the mouse stick or jump a little bit. And so what I ended up doing is I've ordered a giant mouse pad um, that goes underneath the keyboard and gives you lots of room over here. I uh, really don't like my mouse pads, but um, I guess with this texture I need it. So that's something else to think about. If you don't want a mouse pad, maybe stay away from the prettier texture style and just stick with a flat tile. Here you can kind of see behind the magic. Uh, a couple things more I need to take care of is I need to adjust the curtains up higher or get shorter ones because they're all flopping over here and up there there's tons of light coming in so I stuck cardboard up for this video. And the other thing is that with uh, two desktop computers and then a couple laptops every so often uh, is too much for the central air to keep up with. And so I had to go out and buy a portable air conditioning unit, which is, as you'd expect, pretty loud. But it does cool the room off pretty well and then uh, it's able to kind of stay at a usable temperature so I can turn it off while I'm filming. But. It was a necessary evil to not be dying in this room. The only thing left to do is to tally up the damage. So in this spreadsheet, I added all of the items that I purchased for this project. Uh, and the grand total came out to $466.24. With tax, it came up to just about $500 even. Um, now some of this stuff you might have at home if you already do woodworking stuff. Um, I moved so I couldn't find some of my things and just bought new stuff and the air conditioner uh, Where is that right there added quite a lot on so and these things I ended up not using So if you want just the cost of the parts for this desk, it comes to Just shy of $200 so that's a little more reasonable if you consider the size that we have if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, it helps other people find the video and shows that you like these type of things. And as always, please subscribe to the channel because it helps it continue to grow. Really trying to hit that 100 subscribers mark so I can change it from youtube.com slash random characters to youtube.com slash my channel's name. That's the biggest thing I'm working for. And so if you can subscribe, I'd be really grateful. And once you're done with that, uh, check out one of the other videos we got right up here, or here, uh, one of these sides. And as always, thank you for watching. See you next time.